I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, in 4v4 custom action, we have eight players duking it out on the one, the only, the inimitable Seton's Clutch. With the North team in the North and the South team in the South, let's go on to meet them. In the air position for North team, Mr. Science, who is 1400 rated, and Seraphim in brown. In the rock position, Reversant, 1400 rated, and Cybron in dark blue. In the forward position, and already marching forward for that tasty central reclaim, GFY Depony, 1500 rated, and Eon in purple. And last but not least, the team's highest rated player is in the beach position. This is Accidental Eon, who is not Eon, he's UEF, Ruji enough. He's 1800 rated, and he is in Burgundy. And their mirrors. In the air position for the South team, the highest rated player on their team and in the game, this is Knusperkex, who is 2000 rated and UEF in white. In their rock position, the lowest rated player in the game is AI Easy. He is not an AI, he is a human, believe it or not. I don't know him in person, so I can't tell you whether or not he's easy. But, that aside, he is 1100 rated, he is playing Seraphim in Mauve, and he's gone first air, which I sometimes see happening in the rock position, and in order to fuel his insatiable power needs and no hydro until all the way over here, he's got a bunch of engines out on tree claim as he should, and in the forward position, already well on the way to the front, this is Johnny Flash, who is 1500 rated and Eon in orange, and he's bringing some engineers to support his forward advance, whereas the pony definitely isn't, and is coming forward alone. And last but not least, for the southern team, somewhere around here, where's he gone? Oh, he's already heading forward under the water, you can just see him in the distance there. There is a Monstar Slayer, who is 1500 rated, and Eon, in grass green. Now, Seton's Clutch. God damn it, I hate this bug. Let's fix that quickly. Seton's Clutch. I imagine that many of you know the map, as it's quite commonly played. It has a vast heap of reclaim in the middle, which the two front players will be generally heading forward to grab and recently the meta has been that the beach players will send their commons forward in support to come up on these little entry points here to the central causeway and as you can see both players are doing that just as you'd expect meanwhile you expect these players here the rock and the beach player to be covering t1 air while the air player rushes for t3 air and it's happened again. I'm just going to not worry about that. You're just going to have to put up with it. I'm sorry about that. Both players, as expected, sending out drops to try and claim their islands, but Accidental has locked on to the drop from AI and is trying to shoot it down, but it is going to land its engineers before the transport is destroyed. So that's all right for for AI. And over here, Reversant has landed uncontested. Those engineers from Johnny have set up a factory to produce, well, more engineers right now, but Deponi is having none of it. And he is well, he was shooting them, but now he's more interested in reclaim. And if we have a quick look at the reclaim, we can see that the ponies gathered up 4.3k, whereas Johnny has gathered only 3.4. So the pony is a little bit ahead in reclaim, despite these extra engineers that Johnny has brought forward. Commander under attack. There we go. I couldn't stand those stupid little buggers down the bottom there, so I've got rid of them. Meanwhile, the comms are engaging over here for Johnny and Accidental, while Deponi and Monstar 
keep up the reclaim work and overall northern team is still ahead in reclaim but we do have bombers coming out to do a bit of harassment from accidental and he might be able to for example take out some of these factories building back here he might be able to just harass a com to the breaking point and Johnny is in a bit of trouble because whereas he's been focusing on bringing engineers forward the pony has just brought a lot of spam forward and so Johnny is deep into the yellow perhaps soon to go into the red being chased by accidental and by the pony spam and he, he stays in the yellow just about but he is forced into the water by the northern team and rather than try and influence the fight in the middle we have these bombers killing mexes here and they're going to take that one out with one pass but to team one the northern team is in control of the air game and they're absolutely making use of it the worst ant is dropping some units down here and he's covered it with a fighter screen those bombers have taken out another mechs but have since been taken out themselves by monstars um inties just a couple of mantis being dropped here and they may get some work done especially as Monster isn't actually producing out of this factory. Monster himself is probably more worried about what's going on over here because Deponi has more health than he does. And Deponi has this spam coming down here though. Maybe um maybe Monster and the southern team aren't aware of that. I don't know if the worst is gonna get that, because now Monster Seed is producing and Reverse Ant is hard focusing the factory. However, two comes v1, but the pony has brought spam to a cum fight, and that may make all the difference. This forward position is going to be overwhelmed by the artillery that the ponies brought as part of his force. Johnny falling back, Monster trying to hold his ground a bit and does get a nice rank of veterancy there, but the pony has the, has the firepower of a com. I was about to say the gun, but he doesn't of course have the gun upgrade. And he's got the spam, which can bombard the swarm of incumbent. Johnny is actually down into the red. Now, a com bomb does 2500 damage or thereabouts so it looks like these two might take each other out but the pair of com bombs might also take out monster if he's too close and this looks like we might be in for a three-way tie between these players and the pony is not afraid to take it he's not getting out of there so he's gonna take the other two with him boom not one not two, but three comms taken out in a single explosion. Deponi, Monstar and Johnny all taken out. But what is this I see before me? That is a T3 com on a transport flying across the pond. And where is he heading? Well, we don't know for sure yet. Now, he's the highest rated player, so if these fighters were to see him and take him out... That could be brutal. We have another litter drop coming in from the worst ant while that happens over here. But, and is this little inti going to see it? It is not. That transport is coming through. Meanwhile, though, Accidental is pushing in down here. I think we need to go to split screen to observe both of these fights. Down here in the south, we see the worst ants drop getting some work done in what used to be Monstar's base. And here we see AI coming in all on his own, which may be a little bit unwise to fight off both the spam and the com of Accidental. Over here, this is where all the action is though. Look at this a T3 com, several engineers get brought along with him. And he is 
throwing down these T1 point defences at a rate like nobody's business into the base of Mr. Science. They're being shot down almost as fast as they're being put up, but the key word there is almost, and he's making headway. Over here on the southern end, we have some progress being made by the worst answer to drop, but this is where the action is, and we want to have a look at Accidental and AI fighting it out. Now, Accidental has the spam with him, but Knusper could perhaps produce something here to help AI. However, Knusper is going to be using all his APM up here, where he's now brought in a couple of Janus to help out. And look at this, he's destroyed the T3 Air HQ belonging to Mr. Sans. He's destroyed the P-Gens. He's putting up land factories to get spam out, though it looks like he's actually only curing up engineers for now. This, this is an amazing drop from Cusper Kex. He is utterly clearing out Mr. Science. AI has been forced back over here. He's in the yellow and there's more spam coming for him. He's holding his ground a bit, which is unwise when there's that much arty, because that's a lot of firms in there. But actually, he's, but he's, he's pushing back in and Eon's com is under Janus fire. Meanwhile, we'll notice that there are TMLs going up for Crisper Kex, who could easily target several of the mechs around here with those. We'll see what he does. But he hasn't really started producing spam from these factories yet, and maybe he needs to soon. That said, he's not going to have any shortage of factories to do it with, but AI is in trouble. He's in the red, and boom! AI has allowed himself to be caught out by a wave of spam from Eon, so he also dies, and now it's just Crisper Kex on his own, and he's in the enemy's air base. This is madness, but Eon is in the yellow and taking more damage from these Janus that Crisper Kex has sent in. However, Rewersant has brought Inties into the fight and he saves Eon from the Janus. And Eon looks like he's pulling back a bit, so I think it's time to go back to a single screen. And while we're at it, we should have a quick look at the player Ecos. And the very first thing we see up there is that Mr. Science, having been utterly crushed in his original base and losing all his power, is very badly power stored. And since it's often the case in Cetons that the other players rely on the air player for power, Accidental is just about balanced, but only just. Same with Reverse Sam, but Mr. Science, that was a bit of a problem for him. Crusper Kex, though, remarkably well balanced. Look at that perfect mass bar sat right there in the middle and the site power overflow so we can afford to do a bit of shenanigans like overcharge. That's perfect, if you ask me. Back to Observer View. So here we are back in the overview and we can see that the worst has basically just won the South Pond and Tally. Sure, there's a couple of Aurora's there, but nothing that the worst can't stop. And he's also just got himself a T2 naval yard, so Salem's actually just walking up the beach could be quite the problem for Crusper In the North Pond, we have T2 out already in reasonable numbers from Accidental, but it's less of a problem for Crusper up here because he has a lot of spam factories supporting and a T2 factory of his own, although he's only just cut out one destroyer. And there are no support factories up here for Accidental. Meanwhile, look at all those spam factories, and we can see the tactical missiles firing right now. Let's have a quick look at what he's shooting. Those tactical missiles we mentioned earlier, he has three of them, and he is sending them to pick off Mexes. They've already got one up here by the looks of things, and another, and another. This is going to hurt Eon's eco quite a bit, and another. This is, this is great stuff. He doesn't quite take out that air HQ, but look at the mexes as they just fall. A tactical missile defense is put up and does manage to block a couple of the missiles going in there though, so I don't think he'll get a great deal more traction. He could fire at some of the worse end stuff though, that might help. Meanwhile, he has no fewer than 25 spam factories up there. 
and they are actually beginning to produce spam. He really needs to get his hands on these mechs. He's stuck kill this mechs, generally just consolidate a bit, and he's doing that with triads. And indeed, many of these factories are on the way to T2, but they've only got, from the looks of things we can see down in the bottom left there, they've only got Lobos and NGs queued up, so he's only upgrading them for the speed of production, not for the tech. Over here, we've had a line of spam come down the causeway and just eat its way through the base belonging to, that used to belong to AI. We've also been having drops coming in over here but they've been shot down and we've also ha had tanks just come floating across from the pond just being naughty naughty floaty floaty to match what I'm sure is about to be some naughty naughty walkie walkie over here and they're getting work done so that is quite a lot of good progress being made by accidental here but the progress that accidental is making in the south is being countered by the progress that Knuspekex is making in the north. Look at all of this, this is great stuff. The spam is really beginning to flow from this huge horde of factories and what have the northern team, what have team one got that they can do actually to stop it? The worst that hasn't been touched much but he seems to be focusing on air, he's going for T3 air there far more than he is on getting any land force to counter this vast wave of spam. His naval yards have fallen but Kluspekex has what's left of his navy coming in on a counter attack and this destroyer could mean trouble for Eon's comm if he sees it. But can he see it? No he cannot. That destroyer's sonar and doesn't reach far enough and nor does the sonar of the frigates. So it looks like Eon may escape just by virtue of my word is that, is that that's got to be the pony. It is. The pony is not happy with the performance of the worst ant, and he is making his feelings known at great length. I think he is going to strap on him, says Mr. Science, and he's quite right. He's seen this flying over Eon stuff down here. Accidentals, that is. I'm not going to call him Eon if for the only reason that he's not Eon. He's the UEF. Anyway, there is a UEF strap coming up here. I think that. Tuspex could have gone for some broadswords here to clear up this sort, but he's producing many spam factories down here as well, and his spam could deal with it. So we ought to have a look at what this strat bomber is actually going to do, because there's nothing to stop it up here. And the worst hunt has reached T3 air, but he hasn't got any ASFs up yet, and he hasn't even got the T3P gen, there it is being queued up, that he needs. Now, that strat has obviously seen Mr. Science. The pony's saying there should be ASF up already, and you can see why he thinks there should be ASF up already, because Mr. Science is under bombardment from the strat, and there's nothing really that the northern team can do about it. That strat is targeting the comm. One more hit will kill him. And I think this mo one more hit is going to be it. Boom! Up goes Mr. Science in blue five-pointed fire as Suspekex's strat takes him out and accidental quite wisely retreats into the water because Pekex of course also does have ASFs of his own to defend against any that the worst hunt might send but the worst hunt has now at least got a decent number of spam factories up and is pushing back in so Chris Pekex is looking a little more threatened he's got an immense amount of PD here to defend along with his spam factories but we can still see a few trickles of units getting through but you know what I was saying about broadswords well here they come those broadswords are coming up the middle and I expect he's going to aim to... Yeah, actually, his spam's cleaned up most of the spam here. I don't know if he knows about this, well he does now because he's got a radar. But he can probably handle that with his spam. And these broadswords are probably going to be focused on doing a bit of eco damage, especially to Accidental, who has a lot of unprotected mexes out there. And it wouldn't be a game featuring Cybrans 
<clears throat> if you didn't have a bit of naughty naughty walkie walkie. Here come those Salems stomping onto the land. <sighs> Who told them that they could walk their boats? Either way, those Salems are coming on. However, Salems can easily be swarmed by T1 spam because Salems can, can't fire backwards. So, and they turn very slowly when on land. So if these guys just come out here and run around them, those Salems could be mobbed down. These boys should be able to deal with these boys. Meanwhile, those broadswords are indeed doing eco damage. Look at them carving through these mexes. That doesn't mean that the northern team has an eco disadvantage, though they don't. They are more than double Knuspekek's mass. Go to war to suggest Mr. Science, and he's talking to the worst ant, who is just standing there. And given what happened to Mr. Science, and given that there were these broadswords about, that's wise. If I were the worst ant, I would not be standing there with basically no anti-air defence, surrounded by volatile PGNs, when there are broadswords in, in the area, and possibly scraps too. But these broadswords are m much more interested in cleaning up the eco, and they are hitting mexes hard and fast. But Knuspekek is also losing mechs in the south. The old base of AI is basically all dead. The old base of Johnny is basically all dead. The old base of Monster is basically all dead. But there we go. Those Salems have indeed been just swarmed by these units and killed. So looks like we're worse and we'll have to come up with a better plan than just walking Salems up unsupported if he wants to be able to push with them into the south. Meanwhile, Knuspekek.com being very bold heading forward here. He has got triads in range, but he feels a bit exposed while he's putting up these additional triads. And though Knuspekek's eco continues to be in ruins, these broadswords are continuing to do work. Which way will it go? I think you should go down there into the comments below, tell me who you think is going to win. You might go to the end and cheat, I won't know if you do, but you will. Be honourable. Tell me fairly. Who do you think is going to win? Meanwhile though, Cluspokex is surrounded by spam, and he might be in trouble if it weren't for the fact that with all that regen thanks to T3, and with all these point defences surrounding him, this spam from accidental is just being eaten up and with his bro his broadswords are coming in to help but the worst ant has ASFs on them and if Kluspekex has seen those he hasn't yet responded there are also swifties from accidental and the broadswords are dying but solely and it's given the spam from Kluspekex enough of a chance to hold back the spam from the northern team so let's take another pause to have a look at the player Ecos. So we can see here that Accidental has a beautiful Eco balance, but then you look at his generated mass, it's only 47. That Eco is all, all coming from Reclaim, and that balance is on a knife edge. However, kudos for him for maintaining it. Reversant. Reversant has much more generated eco, but he's got no reclaim, and I feel that's a mistake. He could easily have dropped engineers down here, where he's got control thanks to his navy, or even over here. Or he could be sending engineers in here behind his spam. Either way, he is mass stored hard, and he's also on the breadline with power, with no power storage. All of those are things I feel he needs to remedy. As for Kruspekex, it's a similar situation to Accidental. He's very well balanced. I spoke too soon. He was very well balanced, but he just lost power hard. Or overspent power. And I think he really needs to get a handle on that. But his mass is being supported by Reclaim. Back to Observer View. So, the worst ant has followed the advice of his teammates that we saw earlier and gone into the water, which is reasonably wise. Accidental has done the same on the other side, and of course, Kluspekex is still exposed because he's been relying on the build power of his comm so much. And with these ASFs, he can't really just transport out and fly himself to safety. He has got a transport here, 
but he can't risk getting in it because he would surely be seen. Actually, would he? No, he wouldn't because they haven't got omnisense of coverage around here, he, but he might not know that. So, so he could risk running away, picking up, flying out here and hiding in the ocean somewhere, but he can't be certain. I think this is a mistake by Reverse and he does not need to be spending all his eco on this Tito Navy when he could be more usefully be, be building things either to evacuate Knuspekex from up here or to push in on the actual land like a bunch of engineers here, some land factories, spam spam spam. The pony is not happy about Reverse Ant's performance and as a result well, the worst has come out of the water here, but this is quite a decent amount of teacher spam from Kluspekex, and the worst might just be forced to go straight back into the water. Can this hover know this is all pillars, so it will be forced to stop at the edge? And see, this Salem could just wait here and shoot back and kill it all. However, he does get a mech kill and he can just drive those away now and there is well the sailing could come onto them but I don't think it'll be worth it this could do more damage around here so could this T3 land up here for Xuspertex and he is sending in titans and that will be more than enough to deal with the waves of T1 spam that Reverse Ant is sending out meanwhile Xuspertex's com heads forward with the Ravager creep and it's now getting deep into Eon's base The Salem's are coming onto land in great numbers up here, and there's not much of a swarm left. Cusper Kex will have to be careful about stopping these. Meanwhile, Reversant has a strat, and it's coming out and it's going straight for the comm. It's been seen by Monstar, there are Sams here, and it's not really going to get anything done, and he's shown it. So, immediately, shields are going up for Cusper Kex, who knows perfectly well how to defend from a strat. Sorry, I meant three strats at once, Mr. Sands. All together, not one at a time. That would have that, that still wouldn't have done the job, to be fair, to um, the worst ant, because a T3 com takes five strats. He's over, and indeed, now he knows he's got shields, says Mr. Sands. He would have needed five anyway, because just Kex has the T3 engineering suite on his com. And these boys have indeed come back and are just moving, flanking into the worst end space. And there's a huge bank of servers here, which will clean them up in the end, but they could be over here. And maybe they should be. They are killing off all these factories before they add to Kuspekek's woes. And Kuspekek's position being actually overwhelmed here. He might have to fall back, but he's bringing in those titans. This is all T1. In fact, there's a lot of labs in there. And I don't think Kusperkex will have a problem cleaning that up. He is, however, still having a problem with these Salems, especially now that they are supported by T1 spam from Accidental. Monster Sayer says there's a monkey, and there is, there's a monkey right here. And it can't come a moment too soon because I think that this is spam enough to drive Accidental entirely off the board over here. I mean, he does have some... He has quite a lot of engineering power here, but... And look at his mass. His mass is only 59 per tick. And he'll be losing... Actually, I would say he'll be losing more, but I think he's already lost all his mass from here, and it must all be coming from down here, across here, down go Accidental's factories. And he can bombard with these death rolls.
and we have broadswords coming out. They're, they will be a perfect counter to these Salems, because Salems don't have great anti-air, not much flak, not any flak from accidental in support, so these broadswords will just be able to eat up the Salems at leisure, but they have taken out all the spam factories, so that will make it harder for Crucible Kex to defend if any anti-air support comes in. Oof, look at this though, poor old Accidental, he's lost his entire production apart from these five factories. Oh no, I tell a lie, there's nine, but you know. He's lost basically all his base for on his original side, and what's he going to do about it? Well, the answer is he appears to be coming for it with his com, who is completely naked, apart from a couple of levels of vet. Could this be... Could this be a suicide from Accidental? We will see. Meanwhile, that Monkey Lord that we noted being built earlier is complete and it is walking forward. The... Oh no, that broadsword has landed and is just able to be shot on the ground by the Salem's. You're 2000 rated. You've got the AVM for it, man. You can do it. Especially now that you've basically won this top part. I say that. There is a monkey coming forward. Does he know about the monkey? Well, now he does. and he withdraws a bit and he's putting up ravages and I think that is the correct response to the monkey however he started off, oh I see he's starting them and then letting his NGs finish them while he gets his come out of there which is nice, another strat though out from Reversant and while there are ASFs from Kluspakex I think Reversant is relying on Kluspakex just not having the APM to handle a strat as well as a monkey and he's going for the gun upgrade, which I think is a little bit of a courageous move if he's planning to head off a actual literal monkey lord. Meanwhile, the slow advance of Accidental, backed up by what's left of the worst and Salem's, continues across the southern side. But here comes Accidental's common. Yeah, he's just he's just walking in there. The Monkey Lord is taking a lot of fire from the point defense, it's taking a lot of fire from the spam, and I think it's going down. Boom, the Monkey Lord's going down, and that leaves Accidento in a position where he can be targeted straight up by Ravagers. And he's shooting the, the, the Ravager he can shoot, but he's not getting a great deal done. There's triads also in range, there's units swarming and accident is not moving. Oh, he is falling apart, maybe he's decided against the suicide, but if he's decided against the suicide, my dudes, he has decided against it too late. Because this, I think, is the death knell for Accidental, surrounded by T1 spam and being shot by Ravagers, and boom, Accidental goes up to the Ravager fire. And now it's 1v1, Knuspakex versus Reversant, with Reversant holding the middle and Knuspakex holding the ends. And the, the strat, strat from Reversant is shot down. He's got another monkey under construction, but with the, sh the shields have been taken out though, but Kluspakex has seen them and he is queuing up a lot of Sam, so he will be able to hold out if fewer than, if it, it, so few strats come that they can't one pass him, he'll have enough Sam's to kill them as they turn and come back. So, if Reversant wants to be using the strats for this, he's going to have to commit. And at the moment, he's not really committing. He's only got, he actually has got two, three, four, four T3 air factories. But I think he's trying to get air control first, which is understandable, but I think he has got air control, because what can Kluspakex do? And a quick look at the eco shows that Reversant has two and a half times the mass income of Kluspakex, and so he can just outproduce him. Another monkey, but he's got another one queued up after that. Is he going to wait to bring them in both at once, given his experience with the last monkey? Or is he going to trickle them in and just try and get through, do a little more damage each time? Over here, those broadswords keep on, I would say, wailing away, but you know, whalers are the cyber ones, right? Ha ha, I'm so funny.
but with the eco differential, what can Knuspekex do? Team 1 have in total collected 200,000 more mass than Team 2 and a lot of that has been going into things like these monkeys which I don't know if I can stop but that said looking at the kill death ratios Team 2's kill ratio is twice as good as Team 1's so that is that means that for every point of mass that Kuspekex and his team have gathered, they've killed twice as much as every point of mass that the worst and, and his team have gathered, and so Kuspekex's team will have actually killed more, which is quite good. Ian pointing out correctly that he should stop say them production because what's he gonna do with them? Nothing. If they come up here they'll just be eaten by gunships. And there's already better things than say them's up here, like these monkeys. The second monkey though is about to complete. I think he's gonna send them in two at once. But Kuspekex is making back ground in the south. He hasn't yet really got the engineers to... Well, he has, but they're not doing anything. Lots of idle engines down there. He's making back the ground. He just needs to capitalise on it. But with the air control that he now has, the worst is sending actual whalers this time to come and fight Kuspekex in the south. And there are ASFs here, and Kuspekex sees them and goes for them. But... There's the worst sense, the second monkey up and running, and can Kuspekex stop two monkeys? Well, he's gonna go for it with heaps and heaps of ravages. There's also a few Percy's in there. Percy's particularly good Tech 3 units when it comes to fighting experimenters because of their massive alpha strike. Lots of T3 factories up here. There's one, there's one. I say actually I say lots, I think only two of them are actually T3. So he could do with a few more of those. That strat is wandering around unhindered and but it's only been killing little stuff at the moment. 28 kills but only 1370 mass killed. But here come the two monkeys going for a little paddle in the pond. There they are. And it looks to me like they're just going straight for the com. And I think Sure, there's a couple of ravages there, a couple of triads, but there's, it's just a little bit spotted about it. It's not the vast bank of point defence that Kluspekex would need to stop even one monkey, let alone two. And he's running for it, but his transport's been shot down. If you, Now would be the perfect time, if you could, to bring in a transport, but with the ASFs over here, I think the transport would just die. The com is pung, and the monkeys come charging after him. They haven't got target priority ACU by the look of it, which is something that I think the worst ant ought to set. But now, well, almost says Kuspekex as the monkeys open fire on him. His health sheds away and boom, Kuspekex dies at 38 minutes after one of the most bold, crazy and almost successful drops I've seen straight into the other air player's base on the Cetons. That's some epic buffoonery, some fantastic clowning around. Tell me, what did you think of it all? Do you think that the North team could have been more prepared for Knuspekex's drop? Indeed, I saw Mr. Science pointing out that it might be coming when he saw the transport a little before it. So, just a couple of fighters on patrol ready to start stop at that transport? Like, a flak or two here? I think that they could have done that and it would have paid off. It would have just stopped the drop. Also, could Kluspekex have done more to snipe those remaining comms at the end? Like, he knew they were both in the water, and for a time he had air control. He could have put torp bombers and killed them. Tell me what you think in the comments below while you're down there. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I am the Commissar, and I will see you next time.